Okay. Okay, okay. So, um... Are you ready? I'm ready, yeah. The most bizarre and brutal series of crimes in America. All right, so I get asked this question a lot. What is my job? Because surfing is so foreign to people as a normal job that when you're not contest surfing or being competitive in surfing, people are like, what, what do you do? How do you live or make money? And I, I really, honestly, my job, plain and simple, is to surf big waves and get barreled. That's, that's it. Tahiti has one of the most craziest waves I've ever seen in my entire life, Chopo, which it's basically like an anomaly. Like it's not possible when you're looking at it because you're on a boat literally 10 feet away from this wave that's the biggest barrel you've ever seen in your life. And it turns out that that's one of the best waves on the planet. To really make a statement out there, you either have to tow into like the biggest wave ever or paddle into waves that as of right now are not paddleable. And people are doing it. I'm gonna go back to Tahiti every year, even when it gets the best of me. Tahiti, baby.
lips igniting like a prelude So traveling has become a really funny thing for me because um, we're always filming everything and when you get to certain places people are like what is happening like there's these cameras in the airport and we're like walking around I'm talking to a camera and people are really thrown off by it, it ends up being really funny sometimes sometimes security gets really tripped out and like makes us delete the footage and all kinds of stuff and I don't know it's become <laughs> really funny Oh, man. <laughs> Why would they put us up here? There are also two window exits over the wing. Watch yourself. A little darker color. It's making me sweat oh. looking at it. <laughs> oh, How did this happen? <laughs>
So surfing big waves comes with a lot of stress. There's the, first of all, there's a factor that you might die. And that's like the biggest fear factor, you know? But then along with that, you need to set up safety. You have to be prepared. You have to get all your equipment ready. And it's a lot more than just going out and surfing Rockies or your home break, you know? You have to travel places. You have to have all the skis and boats set up. And you're with your friends. You have to have cameras going. And you have to be trained and ready and prepared for waves to land on you or to get caught inside by these waves that can really just kill you. So dealing with that, all of that put together is the hardest part about big wave surfing because once you're really on the wave like once you're on the wave already like the work's done the hard work's done and you just got to focus on making this wave and yeah that's kind of how big wave surfing works <laughs> Getting barreled is a really tough feeling to describe. Um, only a surfer knows the feeling. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> no, getting barreled is insane. It's like you're in this thing, this movement of water created by Mother Nature, and you are standing inside of it, hoping to come out. And then when you come out, you're just like, that was the most interesting, crazy, best feeling I've ever felt. I want to keep doing that for the rest of my life and get paid to do it so I don't ever have to stop doing it, you know? That's what getting barreled feels like. <laughs> I'm addicted to getting barreled, yes. That's all I want to do is get barreled and surf big waves.
pipeline has become this like mecca and epicenter of surfers that surf really well and to be noticed out there you have to set the bar so high because everyone's skill level is so good that you have to get the deepest, the biggest, craziest barrel ever to make a name for yourself. And that's become my life is surfing pipeline and really making a name for myself and that is my job.